before work and after work, whenever my shift was, I, I was working on building the website or doing my own competitive analysis and figuring out what my value propositions were going to be. Um, I did not go out much, (laughs) (laughs) you know, I, I was also single. I was young. I didn't have much financial responsibility other than rent and, you know, whatever else, whatever else there was. But, um, I, I also decided, you know, I'm, I'm just going to kind of put myself in a hole and kind of not socially shut down, but just give myself the room and, and save the money on going out and spending it on beer and alcohol and whatever else people do at, at 24. Um, and, and just save my money and just keep working hard nights and, and on the weekends. And, um, once it, once I finally got to the point of opening a business account, right, actually forming the LLC, that was a, about a full year later. Um, and I had made some small investments here and there as a service-based business, right, with my main tool being PowerPoint and Keynote, like, you know, costs for starting it were extremely low. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, once I was actually ready to launch and form the LLC and then went to the bank, to open my business account, um, the banker said, Hey, here's, you know, here's your credit card. You have, I think it was an 8,000 or $10,000 limit on it. I can't remember. Maybe it was six. I have no idea. Uh, limit on it. And you have a full year free of interest. And I was like, yeah. And I was like, Whoa, wow. Like, wait, what did you just say? So (laughs) I get to spend money on this credit card for a whole year without interest. And he said, yeah. And I was like, wow, this is, this is, this just, it completely had changed the game. So I, um, I told myself and obviously, and knowing that, you know, credit card debt is a huge problem, especially with people at my age, I just decided I was going to be very careful in how I spent on it, used it and spent the money. And I accrued, I think probably like $10,000 in debt. Uh, to start the business, but also promise myself no matter what that by that year mark, I was going to have it completely paid off. Uh, that was my goal. And so I just carefully spent and, and I meet, met that goal. And after the first year it was profitable. And so really just a credit card. And, and of course, uh, you know, I guess my privilege and advantage was also having my credit be tied to, um, my family's account who ha- also had good credit. So I recognized that completely. And that was my leg up and advantage in opening the credit card with Chase. But um, yeah, that, that's how I did it. That's actually great. I haven't heard that yet. That's very smart. Yeah. Um, and what about, were there any um, services or software that you use that you found was were particularly helpful? I, mean, I know you mentioned obviously Keynote and PowerPoint. Um, but were there any others that you used early days that you found really kind of saved you a lot of money? Hmm. Um, I would say this. I didn't really spend a whole lot of money on softwares and paid advertising or any any of that in the beginning. I really solely focused on networking and just going to events and, you know, putting on my name tag pitch decks, which, you know, got plenty of people's attention. Um, (laughs) and, and I spent money on that. I honestly, like that was where I spent my money was just going to events, networking, getting, getting people to recognize that I was the pitch deck person or the pitch deck girl, whatever it was. And, um, and, and yeah, we really still have not done any paid advertising next year. We'll start to, um, yeah. And then all word of mouth. All, all word of mouth. And then, well, also, we, I definitely invested time and money into meetup, meetups.com or meetup, sorry. Um, and start, pitching just really started as just a meetup and as a workshop where I was teaching entrepreneurs how to be better at creating pitch decks and kind of get them into the mindset of, you know, how are investors evaluating you when you're pitching them? Um, mm-hmm. And that that was also very helpful and just kind of getting the name out, getting people to trust me. Um, and I, and I, again, I don't think I ever got a client. I rarely get clients out of those workshops, but at the same time, it's just good for the community. 
um, and it's good for just building that recognition and trust within the community. So referrals do come out of it. And um, I know you're really busy and you have a lot of clients um, now and your company has really taken off and you're, you're starting to scale in different ways. Um, can you talk a little bit about an area that's of particular importance to women, which is self-care? Mm. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I love it. I mean, to women, to men, to everyone. I mean, entrepreneurship is exhausting and extremely draining and something, I mean, oh my God, I, I say this all the time and I think for women it'll resonate, which is that business is extremely emotional, right? I mean, people in general are emotional, but business is particularly emotional. And it's funny because we were, we were raised to think like, oh, business is business, right? Um, but it's not, it's extremely emotional and you have to take care of yourself in multiple ways to make sure that A, your ego doesn't get destroyed. <laughs> and, and second, that, you know, your, your health is taken care of that in reflecting on that first year in business where I was like working, I don't know, let's say 70 to 80 hours a week because I had the full-time hostess job. And then I was, you know, staying up late nights, building the business and building the website as well. Um, I got sick a lot that year. I got, it was like maybe like seven different times throughout that year. I had fallen sick because I wasn't sleeping enough. I wasn't feeding myself. I wasn't, I wasn't taking the time to take care of myself, which is really easy when your ego is so fixated on making this thing successful. And while ego isn't a bad thing, right? It's a very good thing. It's something that drives you, motivates you, protects you in a lot of ways. Um, when it comes to business, it's also something that can completely drive your business into the ground. Yeah. So um, it's, it's, it's an ongoing practice. I can't say that I have it hundred percent right, but you know, meditation, eating healthy and exercising is, is huge. And like doing whatever I can to keep anxiety levels down, um, always comes first. Cause you know, at a certain point you're, if you're so anxious about the risk that you've taken on within your business, which will happen no matter what at any stage, right. Even if it's like, oh, now you have payroll and every two weeks you have to pay payroll, right? I went through a whole thing with that. It was like every two weeks I thought I was going to throw up because I had to pay <laughs> payroll. <laughs> but, you know, you figure out how to manage your anxiety and just keep it down and remind yourself that like everything is going to be okay. And worst case scenario, what is it? Like you're not going to be, you know, out on the street. You're not going to, like everything is going to be okay. So yeah, yeah. it's huge, huge, huge. <laughs> Well, I'm going to give you my secret hack on payroll yeah, please. Uh, or bill pay, which is put on your favorite TV show or your favorite music <laughs> and distract yourself while you're doing it so that you don't allow yourself to get depressed. <laughs> so that's my secret hack. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, thank you, Jasmine, for being on Startup Hacks. Your insights were incredibly helpful, and I'm sure there are a lot of listeners who have benefited from them. If our listeners would like to reach you or learn more about your company, where should they go? Yeah, absolutely. So the website is www.pitchgenius.co.co, uh, not .com. And another great way to just kind of keep track and connect with us is on LinkedIn through our LinkedIn page. Um, also, feel free to add me, reach out, me, reach out to me. Um, we are our whole team is here and available to to speak with. And yeah, so that was and through the web through the website, that's where they'd reach you. The website, yeah. If you if you're interested in a consultation, the website would be the first way to connect with us, or the best way to kind of schedule that. And then if you just want to talk, you know, get right. some advice, and you just connect. Just LinkedIn would be best. Okay, and that's Pitch Genius uh, on LinkedIn. That's Pitch Genius on LinkedIn. Yep. Right. Perfect. Well, thank you again, and tune in next week for more Startup Hacks. We have another great show you won't want to miss on the secret female founder strategies that can save you time and money when building your business. This podcast is brought to you by Women Entrepreneurs Global, the first startup studio and digital do-it-yourself startup platform for women. 
For more information on our guests, this podcast, and many other female founder programs, please visit womenentrepreneurs.global. I'm your host, Fernanda Carapina, and we will see you next week. Thank you for joining Startup Hack. Tune in next week for more interviews. We have another great show you won't want to miss on the secret female founder strategies that can save you time and money when building your business. This podcast is brought to you by Women Entrepreneurs Global, the first startup studio and digital do-it-yourself startup platform for women. For more information on our guests, this podcast, and many other female founder programs, please visit womenentrepreneurs.global. I'm your host, Fernanda Carapina. See you next week.